rage. An emotion often complemented by anger, bitterness, frustration, and sometimes the most crippling of all, regret. A tool often associated with destruction and the ruining of things created. However, in this mostly forgotten tale, rage is a tool of destruction and redemption. This is one. I made a mistake. We awaken in a dystopia. One could even mistake this planet for a Blade Runner or various Bruce Willis pictures of this particular planet, Fifth Element, or to an even greater extent, Apocalypse. Bruce Willis would also win his first Oscar in his genre-defining performance as Trey Kincaid in this film. All right, getting close to my old place. Hopefully the stash in my lab is still gold. This looks like the right spot. Nice polygon. In a lot of ways, this film would mirror this tragic world in more ways than one. We find our hero, alone, concussed, and hunted. His memory fragmented at best with only fleeting images soon passing. Even as he sleeps, a small flame burning little more than a match right at the sternum of his chest. However, it would grow as his consciousness slowly returned to him. And he found himself struggling to recall virtually anything. That match in his chest had gone from a stationary object in a vacuum to a cigarette carelessly discarded in the woods of a dry season. It was spreading far and fast, infecting the forest till it was almost unstoppable. His throat ached and scratched. The fire propelled itself deeper into every fiber of his being. The rage was a lion and its scratching post was our hero's body. However, even at its worst moments, the flame would be his desire to keep pushing forward, quelling only when he reaches his atonement, for whatever that may be. Waking in an abandoned apartment building, our hero is met with a police chopper already launching missiles at him. An equally apt greeting as well as a metaphor for the journey that lay ahead of him. Who were they? Why were they doing this? His only choice though at the moment, run. Escaping the missile's blast, our hero found he had the ability to execute feats of incredible athleticism. And as he pushed himself further and further down the winding halls, he knew that this had not always been the case. And as this realization came to pass, he also realized that his right arm was no longer there, instead replaced with a cybernetic prosthetic. Even to an amnesiac, our hero knew that this was a relatively new addition to his body. However, at the moment, there was no time to contemplate his future. The flying assault vehicle was maintaining its pursuit and showing no signs of any quarter to give. So he pressed forward, rockets pinning him down at every moment and debris crashing into the sky rise walkway he found himself on. Reaching the end of the tunnel, our hero's journey almost comes to an end as the same debris almost crushes him. Thankfully, he is able to barely maneuver out of the way. He could use this to an advantage, however, giving the man a bit of time to rest in this fortified tunnel of the building. Claustrophobically sitting in the tunnel, he tries to piece together the sequences of events that led him to this point. However, everything at best was fuzzy. The vision of a woman in a lab coat continuously entered his mind. Who are they? The man thought. And as he got closer to unlocking the memory of his own identity, that small fire that had been burning in his chest grew hotter and hotter. The forest that had fallen victim to the loose cigarette showed no signs of quelling. His rage was growing. As he placed his hand upon his chest, he noticed the cybernetic enhancement there and on his back. Somehow, he knew these things were connected to his arm prosthetic as well as the new found abilities in acrobatics and strength. He decided though, it may be best to press forward. No doubt whomever was chasing him hadn't canceled their hunt. As our hero exited the tunnel, sure enough, his pursuers re-engaged with him, propelling even more rockets and gunfire in his direction. Debris showered the sky rise at an alarming rate. No doubt the structural integrity of the building was beginning to give way. No longer hesitant, the man knew desperate measures would need to be taken if he was to escape this place alive. Almost on instinct, he lifts his arm and destroys the rubble with his cybernetic arm by utilizing a laser beam. And as the rubble turned to ash, he could feel the burning sensation in his chest grow warmer. Now, there was nothing that could stop it. 
of all the strange new sensations and occurrences that had occurred in this short life he'd experienced, the sensation he liked. Before he could come to terms with his slight sensation of dread, or to a greater extent truly appreciate the Excalibur he had drawn, entering a tall cylindrical room full of boxes, it was there he came face to face with the same special forces who most likely were affiliated with the attacking aircraft. A choice had to be made, and so was one chosen. They had shown him no quarter, so too would our hero show them. Without thinking, the man rose his arm and fired without mercy or prejudice, laying waste to any and all hostiles that lay before him. Who were these people? Did they possess dreams, ambitions? As frequent the man would have a clear memory would these questions enter his head. That means to say in the present, not a one, as he laid waste to any of these souls that carried hope of exiting this building alive. The corpses obliterated by our hero's laser weapon and brute strength were little more than dust soon escaping into the craps of the collapsing building's foundation. With each body's evisceration into the void, so too did our hero's power grow. His memories cloudy, disjointed, and broken found themselves repairing with each death. His name was on the tip of his tongue, but the reunions of thought would be placed on hold as his feet trembled. Yet not from fear. Something was coming. His instincts failed him, and our hero's laser cannon could not blast through the shields of the attacking craft. Not only would the craft attempt to destroy the surrounding building and the hero in one swoop, but it also set fire to the ground beneath his feet. Another apt metaphor for the events now and those to follow. So he ascended, utilizing the hanging platforms attached to the walls and the various elevators strewn throughout the cylindrical room. Climbing the tower, he would dodge lasers and fire from the attack craft all the way to the top. Reaching the top, however, he would find no exit. Again, he took aim, fired, but still his weapon was useless. The force field was clearly designed from the same tech. His rage was nearly consuming him. And moments before despair, a clarity awoke within him. A clarity he had not felt since the birth of his new life, moments before his concussed awakening. Our hero deduced he may have the opportunity to eliminate this craft without the use of the energy beam or traditional weapons. No doubt his newfound super strength would be enough to quell this levitating horror. Yet the true horror was that it was just out of reach. Punching and kicking the monstrosity would not be the answer. Although for a brief moment he had dreamt of somersault kicking the contraption. Unfortunately, this would lead to his premature death. And as silly of a notion that our hero thought that would be, in his heart, he knew that this answer would correlate somewhere. Unfortunately, today was not that day. He instead looked to the rafters and found the structure itself was only held tight by an adhesive. An adhesive, when tampered with, would result in an explosion. This would be his chance. Without hesitation, the man took to destroying the foundational supports near the roof. If my weapon is useless, I'll bring down the whole building. And so he did. Stage complete. As the debris crushed the hound who had given him chase through the burning forest of concrete, the building erupted with explosions and fire. With the carnage surrounding him, the man watched his work. No remorse, only a lust to fill his rage even more. To be utterly consumed by it. Escaping the exploding building and landing outside, the man is hit with a brief moment of silence. His rage rescinding backward into the crawling sensations within his chest. A new pain takes its place, as if his body was attempting to strangle him as he gasped for air. The man wouldn't know peace. And in moments of solace, this new sensation would be arguably worse than in his moments of rage-induced bloodshed. This new post-battle feeling was regret. The man knew it would encapsulate his entire body when he wasn't fighting. And it was in this moment a memory of his unlocked. My name is... John King. Still, worse yet, he knows in his soul our hero, John Kane, was in fact the opposite. He was no hero. He was a monster, and at best, a beast. 